When I was casting this series, I thought about wanting representation from the American electorate, particularly women. One of the reasons why I was really curious to see this cross-section of women get together was that I feel like we are a country of so many opinions, voices, desires, wants, but we really are more alike than we are different. But you wouldn't feel that if you just sat in your house, watched your favorite news, and then went to the voting booth. The party girls are arriving in Jessica's home state of Georgia. Coming from North Carolina, where they struggled when faced with some difficult conversations, I've arranged for former magazine editor-in-chief and good friend Mitzi Miller to share her experience when it comes to speaking your voice in tough situations. What I want to talk about with you guys today would fall under the umbrella of media training. But really, it's how you get your ideas and your points across when you're not the only person in the room. As women of color, we want to make sure that we position ourselves in a way that everyone is always listening to everything that we said. When women of color are in the media, unfortunately, there's a lot of scrutiny on how we deliver the message versus the actual message. Tell me a little bit about some of the people that you met in each of the places. Well, I know I met Trey. You met Trey? <laughs> <laughs> Trey was our tour guide in North Carolina. Can you tell me what he said? You know, we had a plantation here and a plantation there, as though the slaves on those plantations were not individual people who were all enslaved. I felt that I had to be careful with how I addressed him without making him feel attacked. I think that that was one of the few times that I was really aware that we were on camera. Women of color are often stereotyped as being angry and a lot of times we're subjugated to listen to really ignorant things. It doesn't really matter how we're criticizing it, but it'll look like, you know, like five women of color against one white man who I'm assuming had like kind intentions and it would look like these ungrateful punk minorities <laughs> are kind of ganging up. What about couching each question with kindness? Why not say, that's an interesting point. I hadn't thought of that. However, as women of color, it's just as important that we don't always feel like we have to back down. So you don't want to let these moments kind of pass you by out of fear. What about when what's said is so offensive mm -hmm. that nice is not a natural reaction? Your strongest weapon is your breath. You take that breath because you're entitled to it, use your words. And if things get escalated, lower your voice. Because you cannot fight at an escalated level with a fool and people tell the difference. You have to constantly remember who you are and rise above it. And always end with a smile. <laughs> right? Doesn't it change everything? You know, I just think that that was really ignorant. <laughs> Being near Jessica's hometown seemed appropriate to have her invite a couple of her young Republican friends over for dinner and a healthy political discourse. Hi, John, how are you? John arrives at the house. He's a Republican. He has a bipartisan podcast. He's really modern day millennial Republican. Kayla, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Ronald arrived at the house second, and he's the former chair of Georgia State College Republicans. I heard you guys went to the DNC. How was the DNC? Were you guys really inspired? I was. Now, it's like I'm really interested and it's really it's in my eyes to see. Were you old enough to vote for Obama? When, yes, and, I was. And oh, really? Yes. I voted for Obama in 08 because he was a black man. I sent a message to the world that a black man can run a country. But I'm reserving my vote for right now for Donald Trump. So when you hear people say that they're going to vote for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman, and the symbolic value that it would hold, do you like support that reasoning? Do I agree with who your choice is? No, but whatever your reason is, I don't. I, it does not matter to me, as long as you're voting is what really matters. Do I'm I, just surprised to hear that Donald Trump is still a viable option. I'd just like to know why. What brings me to Donald Trump is what really matters to me at a national level. We need to reform our immigration system uh, drastically. I want to know who's in this country, why you're here, how long do you intend to stay, and are you leaving? 
Okay. Well, okay. I would love to explain myself. So when when when, when when President Obama signed an executive order basically halting deportations, the people who broke our nation laws gets a free pass, a second shot. And I don't get a second shot. I can't go to the judge and say, I, I'm trying to benefit my family. Since Obama, there has been a large number of deportations. The largest, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It is the largest. That means everybody in this table, if we're all a family, you're, you're illegal, you're illegal, you're illegal, you're illegal. Those illegal ones get up and let's go. You're five, you're three. The government has to take over those children and put them in foster care and feed them, clothe them, and put them through school. Fix the immigration system first. We need we to do. stop the flood. There was a story recently about some radical, I believe they were from Syria, who had fake uh, Greece passports and went through Mexico and was trying to come through. It's ironic that I hear this because the only thing I can think of was that the terrorists from 9-11 came through the Canadian border. It's... I was in fifth grade and I was at the border on 9-11. They closed the border. Customs came out. They literally started to inspect every single person, like hands above your head, against the car, lift up your shirt. A man was asking me to do that, and I was 10. I had to lift up my shirt. There were dogs coming. I mean, it was just like state terrorism at its finest. Sometimes, you know, in that social contract, we give up those, the, those liberties, but it's a much greater feeling than being six feet under because of a terrorist. People seem to focus on the southern border in Mexico, not really focusing on the coast, the Canadian border. What we do see in the media is very clear discrimination, trying to say anyone, anyone could come through. Because if you're saying Mexico, 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 you want people to demonize Mexicans. It's just pure and simple. Someone coming from a different country brings in so much perspective and diversity yeah. into the country, and it really breaks my heart to know that the things we do in America, the way we pillage other people's resources, the way we pay people dimes and cents to make things that we pay tons of dollars for, that they cannot come here and be able to experience that same thing because we keep them away, yet we're living off other people and causing them to really... Um, <laughs> I think that what confuses me, and this could be a question for either of you, is that you're so concerned with the equality of consequences when it comes to immigrants, but then you're voting for a party who probably doesn't prioritize equality of consequences when it comes to your race. That's not a party issue. That's an American issue. I'm not over-prioritizing um, immigration over me being black. I'm not sacrificing that. I'm going to carry my American flag. I'm going to have pro-life and Black Lives Matter all on the same shirt because all those things matter to me. I am a gay black man who happens to be a Republican. Uh, so just out of curiosity, how do you feel about Syrian refugees? The Syrian refugee crisis needs to be addressed. At the same time, we need to also acknowledge our threats. My country is first, and our security is first. That is one of the most monumental catastrophes happening in modern day times it's that people really do bad. not give a shit about. And I it's understand really that idea of safety, but we're talking about people who are dying every single day. And when you think about it, terrorist attacks in the United States, I mean, homegrown terrorism is by far the leading cause of mm. terrorism. It's honestly terrifying to think that as a country, we can vote for a man who, for all purposes, hates my existence. Yeah. But to go to the next step further where I have to argue that I shouldn't have to be banned seems absolutely ridiculous to me. Right, so you shouldn't have to be banned. We shouldn't ban anyone from our country. However, we cannot close our eyes to what's going on in the Middle East and the threat that lies there. But at what point does national security trump my basic rights as being a human? I feel like the way you talk about this threat is like this big bad wolf. Like, where do dignity and security... Kind of unfortunate that some people live in, in fear instead of looking at what actually is happening. I think all that fear is stemmed from lack of understanding. And the media perpetuates the idea that understanding is something that we shouldn't strive for. Ronald was, was very nice. With that being said, a lot of the things that he said during dinner were wrong. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, to think that some of his views were a little bit xenophobic and hurtful. You're amazing. Probably. And Thank just you. in our interactions, you taught me so it. much. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. It was frustrating, but I'm glad the conversation happened. Yes, yeah, yeah, my sister from another level.
Before this, I hadn't really discussed my political beliefs in depth with people who disagree with me. Beliefs are not really tested and strengthened until you have to have a discussion with someone who disagrees. 